All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue with our basic uh, painting techniques and we're going to paint this Odie today and that we carved on a, a video uh, some while back. And so now I'm going to step, uh, give you step-by-step -step instruction on how I paint. But again, as I say, uh, the disclaimer, if you have a way of uh, painting that you like, stick with it. But again, we're going to start here. And uh, first I'm going to put my glove on. Uh, safety first and you say why in the world are you doing that because we're going to put some stop cuts in this guide where our paints certain colors won't run into one another and so it's very important that we do that so we're going to start here on the shoulder here just make some small cuts into and they don't have to be very deep but just enough to where the paint will run into those cracks instead of running into the shirt or the overhauls or beard or whatever so that is very important. I, I, I learned that some years ago uh, through trial and error. And so anyway, it's just a good technique to do. So we're just taking our knife and working our way through here. And again, don't go very deep, just enough light stop cut there. And we're going to go around the boots here where the cuffs would meet like that. Okay, I think that's about it on this guy here. There's not a whole lot to him. Well, there's a spot right here we need to get for the old shirt that's hanging be back here. Okay, so as soon as we get our stop cuts in, uh, we're ready to paint. And so we're going to uh, start here. I always start with the, the facial features first by using flesh. And uh, since he only has a, a, a bolus nose or a potato nose, we're just going to dip right into our uh, paint here of flesh with our uh, liner brush here that's a pretty good size, this round brush. And just, again, do not stick the whole brush into the paint itself, but just, just the tip of it. And again, I go in circular motion, keeping this brush moving and rotating around. And learn also to... to uh, turn your carvings as you're painting also and I always say that in the carving and so and we're going to again hit this area of the nose and we're going to hit the area here now of the mouth area uh, we're going to put some other colors here but we want to get a basic foundation down of our flesh colors anywhere their skin exposed okay again Make sure that your brush is rinsed out and don't put too much pressure on your brush whenever you're rinsing your brush out there and especially in the smashing into the bottom of the, of the cup there. All right, now what we're going to do first is we're going to go into our uh, navy blue color. We're going to put a, a, a overhauls on him. And uh, now the earlier overhauls years ago, they were, were gray also. And... Uh, but also, so you can do any color you'd like here on your overhauls. Again, get your brush wet. And again, use the largest brush you possibly can that you feel comfortable with in covering as much detail and ground as possible. So here we are. We're going to go put this paint on. And again, we're just circular motion and keeping it moving. And every once in a while, just always watch where your brush is going and cover that ground. Now, once in a while, your brush will get on an area that doesn't need to be. And so you'll, we're going to, I'll show you how I take that paint off of an area that, that uh, doesn't need to be there. So here in just a little bit with our knife, because I just hit that area with, my, with the paint here that we don't need there. So we'll just take a knife and uh, remove that here shortly. But anyway, so we're going right down here between the legs and and covering all the area we possibly can. And this, we're hitting the cuffs a little bit here as we go. And again, look at this, the circular motion I'm using. And that gives a good area, area of coverage as you're painting whatever it is that you are. Going right up here on the back side of him where the T is, the back of the pants. Working again, circular motion, keeping it moving. And this takes some practice. Some people are a little timid about painting, but this is why I like to use very thin colors. You can always add more if you think that it's too, too light, but uh, 
Always start out light. You can always go darker. Now again, too, if you can plant your little finger somewhere where it gives you better control, uh, that's always good. And give it some stability there. See how well that gives me better control when I've got that little finger or whichever finger it is that you need control with. Use it and go right up in there and hit those areas. Don't worry about if you get a little paint on another area here. We'll take our knife here in just a little bit and remove that. All right, now I'm going to take a little liner brush here and get into the areas of where the, the straps go to the back of the overhauls in the back here, but hit this area right in here and get that good because we're going to go in here with a, and there's our button, and we're going to use a copper color paint there straight out of the bottle to get that button to stand out. So again, we're just taking our liner brush as big as we can. See how well that's covering this width of this strap. This brush is just perfect for this size here. And so again, just like tools, every tool has its purpose. Every brush has its purpose. It's so important to keep practicing and practicing and have fun as you're doing this. Can you hit these areas here? Then I go back in here, it gets just a little bit down here at the bottom of his pants. Now sometimes if your paint's set too long, if you you may have to shake them again. And uh, but again, you let this dry for a little bit. Now you'll see here I've got a little bit of a blue point, a little bit of blue paint on there. So we're just going to take our knife and remove that and see how nice that came off. So that's very forgiving. So don't get all bent out of shape if you get some paint on uh, an area that doesn't belong, okay? All right, <clears throat> now, let's work on uh, the shoes here. And um, we're going to, got to get a little bit more blue right down here on this cuff of his pants. There we go. Again, always look over your, your carving to make sure that you haven't missed anything. And again, you may, you may want to go back over and paint this guy again. And again, uh, and you're more than welcome to. And just, uh, but don't go, don't go too crazy in here because we want to be able to see all the tool marks that the, we created uh, while carving him. Okay, now let's rinse out our brush really good here. And now we're going to go into, oh, let's go, um, let's go with some nutmeg. We're going to give him a nutmeg looking shirt. And again, we're going to use this liner or this round brush here. And we're going to just come in and keep that brush moving. You can see here, when we put in those wrinkles on the shoulder, how that's already showing up really nice in your carving. And this really adds to your carving by adding those wrinkles when you when you was, out, when you was carving this fella. Get a few of our paints out of the way. Now we don't have a hiccup here. And again, just keep moving and dipping that brush in there. Getting all the cracks and crevices you possibly can. And I'm going to show you how we put on buttons here after a while on the, the, the cuff right there. He's got a little cuff, and we're going to put a little white button there after a while. And again, that just adds to your uh, carving and more detail. Um, is better, I think. Now, once in a while, you're going to have a piece of wood that where paint is not going to take it. And that's probably because it's a, a knot underneath there or some type of, 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 a, of a problem with the wood there. So don't worry about it. Um, just try to paint over it the best you can. There's nothing you can do about it. And uh, that's not happened very often, but it, it does. Once in a while, you'll get a piece of wood that has a discrepancy in there in it. A little hiccup in the wood there. 
All right, again, we're going to come underneath the hat here a little bit and uh, get in that shirt. And again, if you hit the bottom of that hat, so what? Uh, you will be able to carve that off. And we're going to jump right across to here and get right in here, the crook of the arm. Now, acrylics, when they're this thin, your project, when it completely dries, it's going to look very chalky. And you'll think, that is the ugliest looking thing I ever saw. Well, I have a solution for that, and it's a dipping process that we use, a sealer also, and it enhances, it really makes your carving really pop. So again, we're just moving around, keeping this brush moving. And I'm liking the looks of this. I like this. I like it. So again, don't be afraid to experiment with other colors, you know. Uh, also look, look and watch people, you know, uh, but don't be creepy about it when you watch people, but their clothing, their, the color of the clothing or, or the dots and stripes, anything like that. Anything can help you to become a better painter or carver. Why, you know, use those resources. All right, now I'm going to lay this brush down now. And we're going to come in with our same color of our nutmeg and come underneath the beard here a little bit to get that shirt of his. And get that in there and get him all taken care of. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to stop here and kind of bring him up to the camera here where you can see him a little bit better. And see he's already taken some shape. And uh, we'll work on that hat here in a little bit and he's starting to come to life. Just kind of let things dry a little bit. Now, if you really want things to dry really quick, if you're doing quite a few of these in a row, like a production, uh, take you a hair dryer that, you're, that you can get a hold of, and this is one good way of getting your uh, carvings to dry quickly, and that way you can move on to funner things on it. And so that's a good way of doing it. And so anyway, we're looking for areas where we've missed. And so again, always turn your carving, look around. Same thing when you're carving your figure. Always keep that wood carving, that piece of wood turning uh, and looking around. And see if there's anything you need to take off or whatever. And we're going to clean out our brush. And we're going to take our knife here and remove this little section right here where our, our apparently our cut didn't go deep enough there. And so we're going to come in here with our blues and hit that again, and just a little bit there. Looky there. Just clean that up really nice. Wouldn't even know that there was any mis discoloring there at all. All right, so let's let him dry there just for a second. I'm gonna clean the brush. And again, I'm gonna put my glove on here. We're going to remove some of the blue color off of his uh, of the boot here. And that way, when we go in with our other color here, black probably, that way it will, won't show up too bad there. All right, so let this dry a little bit before you get on too far on the project. And again, like I said, if you want it to dry quicker, why well, get you a uh, hair dryer and uh, stand back from a little ways and let it dry naturally and it'll dry, it'll dry faster. So, all right, let's go with our black now. We're gonna use black for the shoes. And, uh, or you can use nutmeg or whatever you'd like, whatever color um, of, sh of color you'd like to do for your shoe. And so you can see here as we're getting our, our black in that we're going to apply that all the way around that shoe, the sole. And also too, I'm gonna to have to get my paint over here, but we're gonna get some black plum and do some shadowing here after a while. <laughs> And so we're going to get right in here and get into them right in between the legs there and in between where the shoes are come together. So now we got the boots done, 
And now let's move on to the hat. <clears throat> and again, I've seen hillbilly hats yellow. I've seen them, you know, all kinds of colors, green or whatever. But so we're just going to come in here with uh, uh, burnt umber. And uh, we'll just go in here and start. And again, keeping that brush moving. See how that, when you opened up the end grain here on this hat, when you carved that with your u gouge, look how that paint's just going, soaking it in just like a sponge. And that's okay. Now some people will take and stick a screw in the bottom of there and with, a, with a little wooden handle. And that way their hands are not touching the painting or the, the carving while they're painting. And I've tried that on a few things. It's okay at times for me, but uh, it's a nice way of holding your carvings without getting your hands uh, all messy and whatever, or getting paint on the area of the, of the carving. It don't need to be. Okay, now we're going to come back up here to the top. Again, keeping this brush moving. See, I don't know if you can see it but here on the camera, but, but to see the grain there, I love seeing the grain coming through a carving when you paint. So that just gives, I just love seeing that. And that will really pop later on when we dip them in our solution uh, to make these collars really come to life more. All right, again, look over your carving. I mean, I don't know, but boy, I, again, I come back to this right here, but you can see this streak of grain, beautiful grain right through there. And uh, with, the, with the wrinkles that we added, boy, that is going to be really nice looking there after a while when we get it all finished and sealed. Okay. Now we're going to continue. If you see an area that you just need to hit, well, I just hit it, you know, and... Uh, All right, we're going to let him stand there for a little bit. Now I'm going to show him a little closer. So this is where we're at right now. Boy, he's coming to life. And I'm um, liking the collars here on the camera. It's, it's really going to be a nice looking piece. And um, now let's go. Let me put a lid or two here on before I spill it. And uh, we're going to, oh, let's go. Yeah, let's give him a nutmeg, nutmeg um, beard. And again, just come in here and use this round brush. You can see I've used this brush mostly on this project more than any other brush right now. And that's the way it is. It's just kind of like with some of your wood carving tools. You, you'll, you'll use one tool more than you'll use the other. And you're getting some good results. All right, again, we're just moving again hitting all the areas that's not been painted. Let that paint go in there and do its job. All right, again, turn your carving over and make sure that you get the underside of the mustache and Make sure you get all these little places like this. And again, I'm planting my little finger here on his hat. That way I can get more control to go underneath here to get to the underside, beard, the underside of the beard. All right, we're just about done with the beard. And now we're gonna move on to the mouth area. Now, the, I like using tomato spice for the lips and the inner part of the mouth on my carvings. But again, these are just suggested paints. This is not in stone. If you like the certain colors or a certain way of doing things, do it. But this is just, a, you know, just my guidelines and whatever I, I use. And, you know, I'm always looking for better ways to 
to make enhance my carvings and paints so I'm always looking and learning too. So again we're coming in here just hitting some of these areas where our paint uh, kind of bled over even though we did put some stop cuts there. Um, so we're going to go back and visit those areas. Going back to our blues and hitting that blue there. Look at there. Took care of that spot. All right, we're going to take this little liner brush. It's about a, oh, about a two, whatever. And it's a round brush. We're just dipping the tip in and moving some of this paint back here where you can see better. And so we're getting him ready to do the tongue, the mouth. And that's why I encourage you when you're carving, the mouth is very important that you give the, the carving expression. The mouth and the eyes are the two most important things on a carving, I believe. Because you can carve a great foot, a great shoe, a great hand, but if the eyes and the mouth is not right, people will notice it. Even though they're not carvers, they'll look at that piece and they'll say, no, there's just something not right about that guy, or that piece. So anyway, um, again, that's why I carve every day. I try to, and I'm working on facial features and things because that's where I, I still get hung up on things. Sometimes I have to put a piece down and walk off and go do something else. And I'll come back to it and I'll thought, hmm, that's it, that's what I need to do to it. So don't ever be afraid to walk off from it and go do something else. Okay, we're gonna let him dry just a second there. Now we're gonna get some copper and we're gonna go straight from the lid here. We're not diluting it. And we're gonna put in the little brass buttons where the overhauls, the straps hook onto the overhaul itself. And so just again, just get a little bit on the end of your brush, swirl it if you can. If you can see there, I'm swirling a little bit, get enough there on your brush. And you're gonna come right here and just do a little dab right there of paint. Looky there. Brand new or looking overhauls. He went to town today and got these brand new. Those buttons are still shiny. All right. Okay, we're going to let those buttons dry. Now we're going to put on the buttons for the collar on the shirt, the arms there. And we're going to take a little bit of white and <clears throat> we're going to put it here on our painting pad and just, just a little bit. And you can do this a couple of ways of putting it on. You can do it, either do it with a toothpick or you can do it with a stylus. Now these are what are called stylus and they come in different sizes and shapes. And here's one too. This comes in different shapes and sizes too. And so today we're going to use this end here, which you've got to clean this off here. It's got a little bit of blue paint on it. There we go. And so we're going to dip this into the white here. Now again, just using just the, the ball of it, just hit that tip and just barely put that, the end of that ball in that paint. And right there, and we're going to put a little button. You can either carve the button like we did up here on the straps or put them on. Look at there. And then when that dries, you'll go back in there with a straight pin and Put a couple of holes in it and that will give you look like it's been sewed on. All right, so now we're going to let this set just for a little bit. We're looking over it, making sure we're not touching any of the, the um, fresh paint of the buttons or anything. We're looking them over. All right, now I think we're about to our last part of this. And <clears throat> I use black plum for my shading and I believe it's a very good... Uh, color and I put it everywhere on my carving pretty much and so again I'm just going to put some here on the on the painting pad and uh, just a little bit and I'm going to use um, a little <clears throat> little brush now a medium-sized brush and this is oh I don't know about a number 10 I believe it's called and I'm going to get that wet and I really get it wet and I, I'm, I'm side loading here into the paint. I'm not going straight in, I'm side loading and I'm loading up both sides of the brush right there. 
And then I come out here and I test it a little bit and draw out anything. And then I go back in and load up again. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hopefully uh, put some shadows in the crooks of his arms, anywhere where there is a, a crease, we're going to put, and again, I, this is very watered down now, I don't get it too thick in here. And just give this time and you will see how this will create shadows and make things even pop more when you've have done some undercutting with your knife. This will really enhance it. And then hit these areas like this with your brush, hit these wrinkles, and again, that just makes it really come to life. Again, planting our finger on there and coming down the side of his overhaul straps and coming right across here. And then coming underneath the arm and right up the back side of the arm there. Hope that you can see that okay. I'll try to turn that where you can see that. And again, we're getting under the hat here, coming down. And then I come and hit the tail part where we put the T at here for the posterior. And uh, so either we're going to bring it right down the middle of his legs right there, create a shadow there. And so when you start doing this, you're going to start noticing shadows on a lot of stuff from now on. If you're like me, you're going to start noticing these things. And again, we're just coming in and hitting these high spots. We're not hitting all that. And we're just taking our brush and just hitting it here and there. Even going on top here just to give it a little bit. And we're getting to the point where we can about call this guy good. And again, now we got this old knot that was in the wood and I like that. And that's okay. It just I like seeing things like this and a carving, a knot, or a pinhole, or whatever it may be. And again, we're just coming right around the cuffs here, and right around there to create shadows. And just even put a little bit of shadowing right underneath his pocket here where you keep his, his his pencil or whatever he'd keep here in his pocket. It used to be pocket watches years ago, but those are no longer around much. And underneath the stirrup there, where they come in and connect there, just a little bit of, just a little shadow. And I even come in here and go right underneath the beard a little bit and the mustache and hit that too. And now I'm going to take it and I'm going to do a little bit underneath the hat. Just hit that just a little bit. Okay, so this guy, as far as I know for right now, and our last thing we're going to do is some dry brushing, but we're going to let this uh, set just for a little bit before we do that. and. Uh, so we're going to give this guy a little break. Okay, we've let this carving dry for a while, about 30 to 35 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on the size of the carving and how much paint you did put on it. But he uh, soaked up very well and dried up pretty good here. And so now we're going to show you what I, I like doing once in a while. Now, not, all, not on all of them, but this is called a dry brushing, and it just gives it a highlight. And so what I use here is a uh, stylus brush that you can get these at any uh, hobby stores anywhere. And they come in different sizes. But this guy here, he is, this brush here is just about the right size for what we're wanting to do here. So what I'm going to do is I go straight in from the top and just barely hit um, the bristles with the paint. Uh, because that, that soaks up quite a bit more than you think there. And so be careful uh, that you don't plunge the whole thing in there. So now what I do is I use a tapping motion and I just tap this all over the table here or the palette until it's almost gone. See how it's almost gone there? And uh, so now we're going to come in here and we're just going to lightly hit, lightly hit these areas and 
it shows a, like a worn look on his jeans. Put a little bit on his shoes, things like that there. Even if you want to make him just a little older character, put a little bit of white in his mustache there. And so this will really, uh, you can see here, help enhance your carving more. And again, if you don't like this, that's fine, whatever. <sighs> but again, you may have to come back and hit this brush again and load that brush up with some more paint and tap that out. And then now watch when here, this hits the wrinkles here. See how it hits the high points of your ridges that you carved in for your wrinkles. Doesn't that look nice? And uh, just really brings the carving to life. And again, let's reload here again. And let's tap, tap, tap. Come in here and hit these areas. And I like how it gives, it just catches light and reflects light. And you can even hit it on the top of his hat if you'd like to. Again, just tap this brush, get it loaded, tap it out, tap it out, and then go back in and hit the areas with your brush here. All right, now we're going to come over to this side of the arm and do the same thing. Again, tapping it out, not leaving much on the arm, and just going to hit the high spots. All right, look him over. If you're satisfied with the results, you know, that's what matters. Okay, now we are at the point here. Let's put just a tad bit more white in this beard there. Now again, you don't have to. If you want him to be a look, looking more younger, then don't put the white in there. And, but this is just the way I do it. And again, I don't do it on every carving, but uh, this does give it a worn look in places and where the light would catch. And so you can see here on camera how it just it highlights these areas where you created it, where you carved with the wrinkles, even on the hat you'll see there, and on his arm there, and all these little places. You know, don't go too crazy with the white, but just enough to show some highlights. Now, to create the buttonholes, we're going to take the, the other end of this stylus brush, and it's got a very sharp point on it. And again, if you don't have one of these, just get you a straight pin and just go straight in and just barely poke a hole. And you can see there, maybe on the camera, I don't know, maybe too much for it, but there's a couple of holes there and you'll see. In reality, you don't see again um, these little holes from a distance because they're holding the button on. And so that's basically what I do. And that's how I, I do a lot of my paintings. So again, thank you for watching and uh, happy carving.